All right, um, this lecture is going to be an introduction to PHP. So what is PHP? Um, there's a guy named Rasmus Lurford who created it in 1984, and originally it stood for personal homepage. Now it's a much fussier recursive acronym that means hypertext preprocessor. Okay, um, PHP is a server-side scripting language, uh, which is a dynamic language, sort of like um, Microsoft's ASP. Another one would be like uh, JSP for Java server pages. And basically what that means is that PHP scripts are executed on the server, unlike typical implementations of JavaScript, which is ex executed on the client or the user's local computer. PHP supports a lot of different kinds of data databases. We'll focus on the integration of PHP with MySQL database service in this course. Um, it's open source software, uh, which means that it's free to download and use. And because PHP scripts are ex executed on the server, users don't have to uh, have JavaScript, ActiveX, or other poten potentially harmful end user engines to parse scripts. It has widespread database support. PHP is free and relatively easy to learn compared to other dynamic languages like ASP or JSP. PHP can be run on any computing platform, so Mac OS, Windows, Unix, Linux. Because PHP can substitute variables for text and numbers, you can design a site with far less repetition than with plain old HTML. It allows you to make dynamic templates to process user requests and forms, page navigation, and page content. Um, <clears throat> so this is an overview of all the points that I just made, if you want to pause and take a, a brief gander at that. Okay, um, choosing your work environment is pretty important. You need to choose a, a good script editor. There are a lot of different ones available, but you need to meet one, uh, excuse me, pick one that meets uh, critical needs. Some of those needs would be like um, choosing one that has a line numbering feature so you can easily find errors. Balance braces feature is important for finding open and closing braces like curly braces, parentheses, brackets. PHP syntax coloring is really, really important um, because if you get used to the color coding, uh, as you may know from other other programs, um, other editors, from, and like in HTML, um, you know the uh, color will get a little bit wonky whenever the syntax is wrong, and it helps you visually rec uh, recognize where the problems are sometimes. And uh, also PHP code hints and auto completion, that's a really useful feature. So it helps you do a lot of, uh, you know, sort of efficiency steps where you don't have to finish typing stuff, which also helps you, um, you know, eliminate a lot of typing errors, syntax problems. Okay, so um, about setting up your testing server, uh, setting up your personal computer as a web server is something that's going to be really helpful to a lot of you in this class. If you have your own personal computer, I recommend that you do this. You take the time to do this. Um, because PHP is a server-side language, testing your web pages is not the same or as easy as testing HTML pages while working on them. Okay, so setting up your personal computer one of, as a web server, um, you have to have one of the following things, at least one of the following things to be testing your dynamic PHP page, pages. Either one is that you install a web service uh, and the PHP parser engine on your own computer so that you can test locally in your own environment uh, without having to upload to a server and stuff. Or the other option is, you know, if you don't have your own computer or you really, you know, you don't have permission to make changes to your computer, um, you can use a remote testing server to test live uh, web pages on the World Wide Web. And uh, I will be providing, in this class, I will be providing space for you uh, during the course of the uh, semester. Okay, so setting up your personal computer uh, for simplicity, I really recommend installing a developer testing package on your personal computer so you don't have to <clears throat> constantly upload your files every time you want to see the changes. Um, 
Windows, Mac, and Linux users. Uh, you can all use a free web database package called XAMPP, or it's, it looks like XAMPP, but it, it's pronounced XAMPP. There are several out there, though. If you don't want to use XAMPP, you can use MAMP, which is for Win, uh, a Mac, excuse me. There's WAMP, which is for Windows. There's LAMP for Linux, etc. Um, but for efficiency, I'm only going to demo the use of one package that works similarly on all platforms. Um, using PHP and HTML, to understand how PHP works, you need to know how server engines parse different file extensions. Um, so the following things are going to be true about PHP and HTML. PHP code can only be recognized by the server if the file extension ends in .php. HTML code can be recognized in files ending in .php or .html. Uh, and there's some others as well. But it's important to know that HTML can be recognized in either one of those file extensions. The server's web service, Apache, IIS, by the way, IIS is something that would be on uh, Windows computers, um, or Windows servers, I should say, as the native um, web service. Anyway, uh, those web services will handle HTML files natively. When the web service comes across a PHP file extension, though, it invokes the PHP engine to parse anything in between the opening and closing PHP tags that happen to be embedded in, in that document. So the opening and closing tags look like this, where the opening tag is open caret question mark PHP, and the closing tag is question mark end caret, or closing caret. You can mix HTML and PHP code within the same page as long as the file extension is dot PHP. Because PHP is an embedded language, you can do that. But in order for PHP to be recognized, it still has to be in a file that ends in .php. But you can mix the, the two, HTML and PHP. OK, so this is important. Not all HTML starts out as HTML. So a lot of the things, like if you were to go and do a view source in your um, you know, uh, inspector, like in Chrome or or Firefox or something like that, you know, it's all going to look like HTML unless it looks like JavaScript, but it's all going to look like HTML. The thing is, you, you can generate HTML from a PHP script. So maybe it didn't start out as just hand-coded HTML. Maybe it started off from a bunch of conditional statements that pumped out some, some automatically generated uh, HTML. But the thing is, the only thing that the end user's browser is going to see is the digested HTML that the server's PHP engine returns to the browser. And so that's what it means, really, to, to have a server-side scripting. All the activity happens on the server, oh, excuse me, happens on the server, and then it pushes it back down to the end user's browser. And all you see on the end user side is HTML. Okay. And so the next slide illustrates this uh, functionality. OK, so in this slide, what we have is a picture that illustrates how things can start out as embedded HTML and PHP and then end up as only HTML in the browser. So up on the server at the top, we have a PHP file, and it has to end in .php as a file extension. We have uh, a paragraph that says, today's date and current time are. And then the next line is um, some PHP embedded code where it says to print the Basically, what this says is to print the date, and then it gives some parameters that, um, by the way, you shouldn't be intimidated by, because even I don't remember all of these parameters. I have to look them up. It's not a big deal. So you'll learn that later, that a lot of this stuff is really not as intimidating as it might look at first. Anyway, so uh, it'll print the date, and it'll go and grab it uh, based on the server's uh, information and on a time code. And then what it'll do is it'll parse it and then digest it, and then return HTML. So what you see down at the bottom is what the browser displays, and it says to date, excuse me, today's date and current time are Saturday, July 19, 2008, just some random date I picked. And then it has a timestamp um, of the exact, you know, hour, minute, and seconds in the evening. Okay. And then what the source code of the HTML in this case would say is a paragraph tag, and then it says today's date and current time are, and then it says the same thing, Saturday, July 19, 2008. 
you know, 0904.53 p.m. End paragraph. So what you see at the bottom is just purely digested HTML. What you see at the top was how it started, okay? So uh, that should give you just a basic general guideline as to how PHP can generate some dynamic information that you may not, you know, always be able to know. Um, you can't hard code that in, and so that's one good reason that you can use it. Okay. All right, so we're going to start talking about some basics, commands and comments. And this is not going to take very long. This is going to be kind of where we end. But um, first, let's start with the semicolon. PHP commands, uh, they are also called statements. And in PHP, you have to end a statement or a command in a semicolon. If you forget the semicolon, the PHP, PHP page will return an error in the browser. All right, so here's an easy to understand, you know, quasi-code lay term. On the left, you see some PHP tags, and it says now, it says do something, and then it terminates, and then the next line says now do something else, and it terminates. Those are two not real commands, okay? But on the right side, you have some real examples where there's a command that you'll see later that uh, anything that starts with a dollar symbol is a variable. So you're saying, okay, we're going to create a variable called name1, and we're assigning it with that equal sign. We're assigning it to the value of John, and we terminate it. And then on the next line, we're making a variable called name2 and assigning it to the value of doe, terminate. And then on the next one, we tell it echo, which is going to print to the browser. That's a command. So it's going to say echo, and then we're going to say hi, name1, name2. Those are the variables. And then we're going to end that command with the terminator and it's going to basically take those three commands and at the end it's going to output hi john doe okay so it's going to take the variable uh, information and it's going to run it all together and spit it back out to the browser so that's kind of the way a command will work so comments uh, a comment in php is like a comment in html in that it's intended to add notes to the programmer or editor of the page for clarity without having the server's parsing engine display it to the end user. Okay, so some uses for a comment. Uh, explain what the script does, okay, so, or, you know, how it works. This is helpful to others who, you know, may have to work on your code later or even to you um, when you haven't looked at the code for a long time. I comment my stuff really well because I don't expect that I'm going to remember it later. Um, or maybe I won't remember why I did something. Okay, so another reason would be insert a placeholder for your code that maybe you're going to add something later, so you just put a, a placeholder and you want to comment it out. Another would be that you want to disable a section of co code temporarily for troubleshooting. So if you're having trouble with something after you added a section of code, you can comment it out and see if that error goes away, and that helps you identify where your problems are. Okay, so um, there are three ways to comment in PHP. There are two of the ways use a single line type of comment, and another one is a multi-line type of comment. So here's some examples. So the very first example is a single line, but it uses two forward slashes. Okay, and that that would be this example um, in the top would be ignored by a PHP engine, where is as soon as you put two forward slashes in front of something, it sees that it sees the rest of that single line as a comment. All right, it won't read anything else on that line until it it sees a hard return. Okay, another type of single line is a hash symbol. Okay, so if you put a hash symbol, um, you know, at the beginning of the line, then you're going to end up basically knocking out the entire line um, for being read by PHP. Okay, so, and then lastly, we have multi-line. And these look like uh, CSS comments where you've got forward slash asterisk and then anything in between you want to comment. And then to end it, it's asterisk forward slash. And this is really good for... Uh, knocking out chunks of code so that you can troubleshoot. It's also really good if you have a whole lot to say to yourself, uh, making notes. Okay. All right, so that's going to conclude this lecture, and uh, you can move on.